Hello, my name is Kez. Welcome to Collective Worship. I'm the chaplain here at Dyson Parents. Over the last few weeks, we've been talking about Epiphany. And as part of our Epiphany series, this week we're going to be talking about identity. My friend Shell will be singing us a song, and my friend Lucy is going to be leading us in prayer. So let's take a look at this video. He has no food, no drink. 
he truly suffers. But the thing that gets him through is knowing who he is. He is loved. He is a child of Father God and God is pleased with him. Here are some questions around identity. Identity has a lot of different definitions for it, but the one I liked the most was your identity is who you are. The first meaning of the word identity that I came across said it was the fact of being who or what a person or thing is. The word fact implies it doesn't change. Therefore, my identity must be more than what my favorite kind of food is because a few years ago, I used to love chocolate ice cream and now I love lemon sorbet much more. Did you know that your thoughts are really important and actually quite powerful? I remember hearing someone say to me once, 75% of sport is mental. A man called Yogi Berra was an American baseball player and then later on coach said, Baseball is 90% mental and the other half is physical. Now if that's true for sports, surely that means our thoughts and the way we see ourselves is super significant for our everyday lives. This world will too often try to tell me who I am or how I should look or dress. But if I know I am loved, accepted, chosen, as well as valuable, then I can walk in confidence that the opinions of other people won't change that. Sometimes I think the newest trend comes out too fast for me to be able to keep up with. I have people telling me I did the right thing one minute and then next behind my back saying I didn't. If I know I am valuable because I am created and chosen, then the opinions of others, what they say, isn't gonna change that. If I know I am loved, and I wear a yellow jumper when everyone else is wearing a blue one, I know that isn't gonna change that. If I know I am accepted and don't do well on my exam, I know the bad mark on my exam won't change the fact I am chosen. But the knowledge of that will affect my thoughts and my thoughts will affect my actions. Do I speak as kindly to myself when I'm having a bad day the same way I encourage my best friend when she's having a bad day? Because if my thoughts are important, the way I think about myself matters. If I am constantly thinking about the negatives, I am far more likely to become a very negative person. But if I focus on the positives, I am more likely to be an optimistic person. Okay, here's some questions, uh, just a couple. So, number one, reflect on the negative words you say or think about yourself. Number two, would you talk to your best friend the same way you would talk to yourself? Heavenly Father, I thank you that you don't change. I thank you that I am loved by you, that you say I am a masterpiece. I ask that the more I see myself the way you see me, the more I will be able to see and love others the same way you do. This week's challenge is to check how we think about ourselves. Do we treat ourselves as we would treat our friends? Or do we say things to ourselves in our thoughts that are really unkind? Reflect on how you're gonna fulfill this week's challenge now.
I hope that you've had a good week and I hope that next week is even better. I will see you then.